I'm Phil Schwalier. We're in Sparta, Michigan at Schwalier's Country Basket Farm. We have 100 acres here and we're looking at Honeycrisp right now. And I'm Todd Einhorn. I'm an associate professor of tree fruit physiology at Michigan State University. And Phil and I are collaborating on this project to evaluate the effect of netting on fruit set, in this case of Honeycrisp. Sparta in this area is the apple capital of Michigan and we want to be sustainable because we want to be here 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now. And so we need to find the best way to produce a crop that is economically viable, quality viable, and we can stay in business. So over the last few years, um, my group has been testing the effects of insect exclusion anti-hail netting on fruit set and apple. The general idea of the project has been to determine whether or not we could exclude bees from pollinating apples and set a commercial crop without the need to apply thinners. So is is somewhat complicated an apple but generally if left to the bees they will overset fruit. That gives the grower assurance that they have a crop but then in order to get the fruit size and quality, the grower typically comes in and thins those fruit down to a level that allows for the optimal or maximum production and profitability. So what we would like to do is eliminate the need to thin and it's particularly of interest in organic production systems where growers don't have the arsenal of thinners available to them that conventional growers have. Um, they're largely limited to lime sulfur and in some places lime sulfur is not um, is not toler tolerated uh, for use, so that might be another caustic thinning compound, which is most often utilized at the bloom stage, and we do thinning all the way through post-bloom fruitlet development stage. So the idea to have an alternative to chemical thinner that could be utilized by an organic grower that could set a crop without the need to hand thin, whether conventional or organic hand thinning is, is, is cost uh, prohibitive and not desired. So that's the general idea. In this particular experiment, uh, we're, we're being hosted by three farms. Phil is one of them with Honeycrisp. We're doing the work uh, in another farm that's a fully organic farm and the crop there or the cultivar is Liberty. And we have a plot of Gala at a research center that we're working with. All three uh, plots have the same design, which is to have a non-netted control, a netted treatment where we drop the nets at 30% of open king bloom. So the king is one of five or six flowers in the cluster. And the idea is when we have 30% open, we drop the nets. Whatever was open could have been uh, set by bees and whatever then is behind the nets is excluded from bees from getting pollinated. And then the final treatment would be 60%, so double the open flowers of dropping the nets. I see the advantage of netting as being perhaps insect control, coddling moss a big one, perhaps quality improvement, we can get apples that are not limb rubbed or maybe uh, damaged by hail. We had hail this year on this crop and I'm sure that these nets will protect from our hail that we had here. We have a check tree that will tell us if it did or not and I'm sure it will. And I think we also get a larger fruit underneath the nets but I'm waiting for Todd and his data to show me that's true. <laughs> I like to see research projects on farm and especially I like working with Todd because he works with plant growth regulators and that's kind of a specialty for me. And so I learn firsthand seeing what he's doing and he's doing multiple treatments. And sometimes when you're a commercial grower you don't have time to mess around doing multiple treatments and compare them. But uh, Todd does that and that really helps me learn. I mean Phil's not only an amazing mind and has incredible experiences as an apple grower and an extension educator in his past life but um, he's taken a lot of risk I mean ultimately we can play around in the lab and do lots of things to prove our ideas and but they don't really pencil out until you get them on a at least on a relative scale that a commercial um, operator can deal with and so Phil's risk is that 
you know, he's allowing us to put nets on a 30% bloom and we may not get a, a sufficient crop at 30% open bloom. And so there's risk in losing fruit. Uh, not only will the crop likely be a little low because ideally 30 and 60% may, 60% may work well for Honeycrisp, but we could set a full crop at 30% for Liberty. And so we just don't know how to do this. So we want to have a rate response, but that that's risk to the grower. If we don't set a full load and Honeycrisp fruit get too big, they're prone to a disorder called bitter pit. And that's another adverse challenge with this. So there, there are lots of, um, it's, it's quite a dynamic situation and working with a grower like Phil, we learn a lot because we get to ask him questions that, you know, only his experience can, can tell us. Uh, and, and then working collaboratively, of course, you always learn more than you go in with.